Hey guys, it's Akila, and today we're going to be talking about indoor and outdoor plants. Which one is it? Are these plants indoors? Are they known for outdoors? If you want to hear about how I care for these indoor plants outdoors, stay tuned. Many of these plants are known, rather all of these plants thrive well indoors, but if you're in a situation like me, where your living situation does not allow you to have plants inside, or you grew up in a home where all plants must remain outdoors, don't worry, these indoor plants can still be cared for outdoors. Now this first plant known to many as the asparagus fern is definitely one of my favorites. I've grown this fern outdoors as a perennial for years. For my beginners, perennials are plants that live longer than two years and annuals are the ones that live for about a year or so. This fern resembles the edible asparagus and is actually not related to the fern family but to the asparagus family. Edible asparagus usually require full sun to thrive, so I'm assuming that this is why this particular type of fern can tolerate much brighter light compared to some of the other ferns that I have. This fern is kept in a place where it receives bright morning to midday sun and then shade in the afternoon. When caring for this plant, be careful not to stick your fingers on any of the spines which is seen on the mature stems. I water this plant daily or every other day, now this is because my plant is in a medium sized container. For persons whose ferns are planted in very large containers or in the ground, you may not need to water as often. But when you do water, ensure that you give it a good drink. I usually try to keep the soil moist as I believe that this helps to keep the plant hydrated and encourages new root. Prune this plant by cutting off any dead or yellowing stems. Over the years, I've also cut the tips of the fern to maintain a nice length and this also helps maintain the fullness of the fern. You can also give the fern a full haircut by cutting off all the stems over the years. This helps the plant to send out fresh new leaves and also gives the plant an opportunity to start over. So if you find that your plant is not doing too well with regards to growth, you can trim it all the way back and let it start over. You can also consider repotting and giving it a fresh new start all the way. Now, I usually fertilize this plant once per month. The bird nest fern is a popular fern that is known as an indoor plant. These plants need filtered light to shade conditions. Try not to expose this plant to direct sun, other than the very early morning sun. Now, I recently got this plant, so it's kind of new for me. I'm also learning how to care for this plant. They are not easy to propagate and cannot be divided as some of the other ferns. So they are usually raised from spores or tissue culture. I'm not too sure how this is done. I try to fertilize this plant once a month, keeping the soil moist but not soggy. Also, avoid watering right over the nest. This can encourage mold or rot. You want to water the soil and not directly in the middle. These Chinese evergreens are freshly tropical Asian herbs of slow growth with leathery leaves that often have silvery or colorful patterns. These plants have been grown as luck bringing ornamental plants in Asia for centuries. It's known for its beautiful foliage and its wide leafy blade. These plants do very well indoors and can also do very well outdoors. For me, this plant is kept in a shaded area outdoors it is placed in an area where it receives indirect bright light usually the bright light from the morning sun I find that if you place this plant in direct sun the leaves will get burned so if you have an area that is fully shaded it should do really well there if you have no shade at all then you can place the plant in between other taller plants so that the shade from those plants will protect it 
from the rays of the sun. A little tip, these plants are poisonous due to the calcium oxalate crystals that are produced in the plant. If they are ingested, they cause irritation of the membranes. The juice can cause skin irritation and a painful rash. This is placed in a shaded area as well. It really does best in a shaded area where it receives indirect light. I have read that the variegated types of arrowhead can tolerate much brighter light. I like keeping this plant in the shade because you get to see the true beauty of these plants when they are kept away from the harsh sunlight. If they are placed in direct sun, the leaves begin to discolor or begin to look bleached. So if you do have this plant already and it's being kept in the harsh sunlight and you want to know why they continue to look like that, it's because the sun, the direct sun is causing the plant to discolor. So once again, if you have no shaded area and all you have is sun, 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 you can do the same as before where I suggested placing the plants in between other taller plants so that they can re just hide behind the shade of these bigger bushier plants. One other thing that I would also recommend is watering these plants regularly. Be careful not to over water. There are different types of peperomias. This plant is kept in a place where it receives the not so harsh the morning light. I only have two varieties, but there are so many more out there that I like to get. If you look at the leaves, you can see that they remind you of a succulent. And just like succulents, this plant does not require a lot of water to survive. Although succulents need bright sunlight to grow, this plant prefers shade or indirect bright light. So I allow this plant to dry out in between watering because too much water can cause the plant to rot. And this is a plant that doesn't require a lot of attention so if you're a beginner this is something that you can consider purchasing or consider getting a piece from a friend or someone who's willing to just buy one for you this is a good gift for a new beginner starting off on their plant journey Paparomia is related to the rubber plant and although they are related this plant does not grow as tall as the rubber plant Palm trees are widely known as tropical palms. They are known to make nice patio plants and also known to live for a very, very long time. The palm that you plant today may very well outlive you. This particular type of palm is known for its lovely dark green leaves. I've had this plant for over three years. I got them when they were very small. This plant is placed outdoors. It is not placed in the direct sunlight, but it gets a lot of filtered bright daylight. This type of palm does not grow very tall. It stays at a very short height. I usually water this plant twice a week and fertilize every two months. What you can also do as well after some years you can consider repotting, potting it a size up if you find that the palm has outgrown the pot that you would have previously placed it in. Now I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.